everybody coming down. I wanted to come down with you. <laughs> I wanted to step down with you. Mercy, Lord, mercy. God is so good. God is good. Good to see you. <laughs> Got my favorite couple I like to see. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Good to see so many <clears throat> guests with us today. I want to thank you for blessing us with your presence. Amen. Can, can, can you fix my mic? It's, it's, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> That's all right, right? As long as you can hear me. That's all right. That's all right. I want you to know that, <clears throat> and I'd be careful what I say. It, you know, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the internet. I can't really say certain things. I have to be very careful. Um, even dealing with, even dealing with with uh, family issues. You don't want everyone to know your business. What's going on in the family? So I have to be careful. And we are a family, am I right? Amen. We are all family here in this church. And I want you to know that I love you. <laughs> Y'all just saying that. <laughs> I want you to know that I love you. Know, you know when Paul, Paul is about to relay a message, he always say what is positive about the, <laughs> he tells you all the good things first. <laughs> But I'm not Paul today. <laughs> but I, I, I do love each and every one of you, and my desire is to have a, 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 a <clears throat> good relationship with each and every one of you. And I, I want to get to the point where, where as a church family, if, if, you have, if you have any issues, that you come and speak to the pastor. You can come and say, Pastor, I, 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 I didn't like this pastor. Hello, somebody. Come and talk to me. Talk to me. That, that's the type of relationship that I would love for us to have as a church family. Amen? Amen. Well, I can talk to you and you can talk to me. Amen, 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 amen. amen. So I'm going to talk to you today. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you today. Uh, turn your Bibles with me. Turn your Bibles with me to Hosea chapter 1. Hosea chapter 1. Verses 3 through 9. Rather, 2 through 9. And 3 verses 1, and, one to 3. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say hold on, preacher. Hold on. Somebody say hold on. So I'm holding. Hosea chapter 1, verses 2 through 9, and 3, 1, 2, and 3. And it reads, and it reads. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go and take unto thee a wife of whoredom, and children of whoredom. For the land hath committed great 
order by departing from the Lord. So he went and he took Goma, <laughs> daughter of Diblim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. Call his name what? For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehud, and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bore a daughter. And God said, call, bore a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name Lohurama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy on the house of, of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horse, or by horsemen. Now when she had weaned the Lohurama, she conceived and bore a son. Then God said, Call his name Lo-Ami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto him, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, and yet, rather yet, an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to, their, to other gods, and love flagon of wine. So I bought her to my I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man so will I also be unto thee. The title of God's message to us this morning is I am in love with a prostitute. I am in love with a prostitute. Let us pray. Father and our God, we come before you this morning asking that you'll speak to our hearts even now as we submit and surrender ourselves to you. Have your way within us, dear Lord, that when we leave this place, we'll be transformed into what you desire us to be. Do this for us, O oh God, even now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I'm in love with a prostitute. Now, I know most of us, if not all of us, have heard or seen uh, the movie Pretty Woman. Well, I, I want you to know this is the real Pretty Woman right here. <laughs> this is the real Pretty Woman. You see, God, God was sitting on his celestial throne. He was contemplating, what more could I have done for my people? What more could I have done for Israel? Because you see, he had taken them out of Egypt and he had planted them in a land flowing with milk and honey. And I mean the land was literally flowing with milk and honey. You see, the honey was dripping from the trees. The cattle, as they walked, they were squirting milk and saturating the grass. It was literally flowing with milk and honey. 
But in spite of all of what God has done for them, they were unfaithful. You see, their prosperity had brought an unprecedented degree of cultural corruption. You see, they, 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 they became so lax, they became so relaxed because of their wealth, and they began to turn from God and turn to idols. You see, this is why, this is why God cannot allow some of us to be wealthy. He has to put a salary cap on some of us. Because he knows that as soon as we get what we want, we leave the presence of God. So, so if, 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 if you're trying to be wealthy and it's not working out for you, maybe God is trying to save you. <laughs> Their wealth has caused them to drift away from God and they began to serve idols. And even the, 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 the famous places where God met with the children of Israel, they turned those places into idol worship. One writer said that <laughs> the elders, the priests, had prostitutes lined up at the back of the sanctuary. They have drifted so far away from God, and God now, like a jealous husband, is contemplating what more can I do for Israel to show them how much I love them. So he, so he calls Hosea. <laughs> and he says to Hosea, Elder Maddox, he said to Hosea, Hosea, I have a message for my people. But I can't tell you what the message is. <laughs> you need to experience it. You see, there's a difference in telling someone a story than sharing an experience. It's a difference when you share an experience with someone than just tell them a story. You see, when you tell a story, sometimes there is not any emotion behind it. There is no oomph behind it. But when you share an experience, your heart begins to palpitate. Your palms begin to sweat because you're not telling them what you have seen. You are telling them what you have been through. So God said, I have a message, I have a message, but I can't tell you. You have to experience it, and when you experience it, you will preach it better. <laughs> so God says to him, God says to him, go, go. <laughs> go and marry a woman of harlotry and have children of harlotry, for the land has committed great harlotry. Now understand, the thing that caught my mind is that God uses the, the, the word harlotry three times. And whenever God uses a word in a sentence three times, it means that you need to pay attention. <laughs> he said, go marry a harlot. Have children of harlotry because the land has committed great harlotry. Understand what God was telling Hosea here. He's saying to him that, that not only, not only is this woman is going to be unfaithful to you once, not only is she going to be unfaithful to you twice, not only is she going to be unfaithful to you three times, but over and over and over and over again. But that's who I want you to marry. I don't know if I could do that. I would have asked, God, is that you speaking? <laughs> Understand, church, sometimes we, we, we believe that God don't work in those ways. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. We believe that God will never tell you to do that. Because as, as, as Christians, we, we, we understand God's formula. We know how he moves and how he works. So we say that God will never tell you to do that. Oh, it's quiet now. 
But my Bible tells me that God works in mysterious ways. So he said, go, 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 go marry this prostitute. In other words, God is saying, go take to yourself a wild, a wife rather, who will prove to be unfaithful. Understand what God was doing. You see, he knew that we were not going to be faithful, but that didn't stop him from loving us. He knew that you'll be sipping on some scissor, but that didn't stop him from loving you. He knew that you're going to be unfaithful. He knew that we were going to be fornicators. He knew that we'd be gossipers, but that didn't stop him from loving you. He knew we were going to be in the club. He knew where you were last night too. But that did not change his love for you. Understand this church, understand it. It doesn't matter where you have been, what you have done. He still loves you because he's in love with a prostitute. See, sometimes, 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 <laughs> I don't think they like this one. <laughs> sometimes God will ask us to do strange things. And then he will use that experience to save somebody else. <laughs> sometimes what you go through is not for you. He's trying to use that experience to save somebody else. So we, and, and I said this before, sometimes we have to learn to suffer for the sake of others. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus suffered for us, so we have to learn how to suffer in order for somebody else to be saved. Get uncomfortable so somebody else might know Jesus. Get off the pews so somebody else might know Jesus. Get out there in the hood so somebody might know Hello, somebody. This, this wasn't a sermon I was supposed to preach today, you know. Sometimes he'll, he'll allow you to go through some things in order to save somebody else. You see, this experience was designed to draw the people's attention back to God. God telling Hosea to do what he did was designed to draw the people's attention back to God. But because you see, sometimes sometimes we get so caught up in sin that it takes something more drastic for us to come to our senses. Because we are so deep in sin, God has to do something drastic to get our attention. Just imagine, just imagine, just imagine. If that was supposed to happen today. Just imagine if I, no, not me. <laughs> not me. Just imagine if a famous preacher went out and marries a prostitute. It will be in the daily news. International news. Preacher marries prostitute. It will be on every talk show in the States. It will be the talk on the talk. <laughs> Everyone in the community knew what Hosea did. He was the talk of the town church. And that was the purpose. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> God told him to do that so he could be the talk of the town. Because he was trying to get their attention. So now, 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 now that he got their attention, he says, Hosea, this is the message. Go and have children. <laughs> That's the message. Go have some children. 
<sighs> what you talking about, preacher? You told me to marry her, now I have to have children with her? Understand that Hosea had three children that he knew of. <laughs> three that he knew of. The Bible said that she conceived and she bore the first son and Jesus, God said, call him Jezreel. She conceived again and bore another and God said, call him Lohu Rama. She conceived again and bore another one and God said, call him Lo Ami. Understand this carefully that Hosea did not name the children. God named each child because God has a message for the people. Understand that back in biblical times, God normally used uh, names and symbols to relay messages. Do you know that even before Noah preached that there was a flood, there was a message being preached that there was a flood? Understand that Noah was not the first one that preached that there was a flood. You see, there was a man called Enoch. You know Enoch. The Bible said that Enoch walked with God and God took him. Enoch had a son named Methuselah. Methuselah lived over 900 plus years. Methuselah was the grandfather of Noah. Understand what God did even before Noah showed up. You see, God has a way of before he, 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 he pronounced judgment, he always extends mercy. Before he pronounced judgment, he extends mercy. Understand what Methuselah name was. Methuselah name, when translate means, when he dies, the flood will come. <laughs> Methuselah name meant when he dies, the flood will come. So way before Noah was preaching, Methuselah had the message. 900 plus years of mercy. God, before he pronounced judgment, always extends mercy. And this is what he's doing with Hosea's children. Listen to me carefully now. God named each child. And when you translate the name, listen to me carefully. Don't miss, don't miss the message. God said, call the first one Jezreel, which means God will scatter. He said, call the second one Lohu Rama, which means have no mercy. He said, call the third one Lo Amin, which means are not my people. So when you put it together, listen to the message. I will scatter you because, and have no mercy, because you are not my people. I will scatter you and have no mercy, because you are not my people. Church, listen to me carefully. Just imagine the embarrassment that Hosea went through because of his wife. some of the men got quiet. <laughs> Imagine what he went through because of his wife. And this is what God was trying to relay. The children of Israel, you are embarrassing me. But you see, because he was in love with a prostitute, Understand what Hosea could have done and should have done. You see, Hosea could have taken his wife outside the gates of the city and stoned her. That's what he should have done, and that's what he could have done, and he would be blameless. But you see, they, they had another procedure. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. They had another procedure. If, if, if you want to find out if your spouse is unfaithful, there's another procedure, Elder. 
The Bible tells us in Numbers that if you want to find out if your wife, your spouse is unfaithful, you take a, a, a barley offering and you bring it to the priest. And the priest will take your spouse, your wife, and, and he will take her into the sanctuary. And he will have a clay jar of holy water. And he will take some dirt from the sanctuary and sprinkle it in the water. And then he will ask her a series of questions. And if she was unfaithful and denied it, when she drank the water, her inside would rotten out and she would carry a stench for the rest of her life. Just imagine if God puts that back in place, there'll be a stench in Flint. There would be a foul smell in Flint. That's what he could have done. That's what he should have done. But because he was in love with a prostitute, he couldn't bring himself to do that. Understand, church, what God should have done to us, what God could have done to us, but because he's in love with a prostitute. You see, a car should have spun out and went into oncoming traffic, but he stopped it right on time. Church, they should have killed me in the club. But because my God was in love with this prostitute. Listen, listen to me. Listen, you see, <laughs> I don't want <laughs> I don't want to tell you too much of my business. I, I gotta be careful because I know, I know, <laughs> I know we have a new way to gossip. We call it prayer requests. <laughs> so I, I don't want to tell. I don't want to tell you all my business. But you see, when I used to go to the club, the church folks used to tell me, when you go into the club, your angels, your guardian angels, stay outside. <laughs> and they wait for you to come out. Because they don't go into certain places. So your guardian angels stay outside and wait for you. But listen to me, church. I submit to you today that if the angels didn't go in with me, I wouldn't be able to make it out. You see, ignorance brought me in, but grace brought me out. Grace brought me out. Some of you know that you shouldn't be out. But it's because of the grace of God. That's why you are still here. I told you he's in love with this prostitute. I don't know about you. He's in love. That's what Hosea could have done and should have done. But, but you see, sometimes, sometimes when you try to to reach someone. Sometimes if someone that you love is not reciprocating back that love to you, sometimes love has to let you go. I know it will hurt, but if that person is not giving you back that love that you're giving to them, sometimes love has to let you go. I, 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 I my wife is, where's my wife? She's not here. She's not here. Oh, she's coming. <laughs> I 
I should have said this before she came in. I remember my wife. You know, love, love has to let you go sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if I should say this. But I remember. It's all right. I know which God I serve. I remember my wife came to me and she told me, I'm leaving. She said, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm through. I'm done. It is finished. You know, I was getting on her nerves. I always get on her nerves. She said, it's, it's over. And I'm leaving. Being the man that I am, I looked at her. And I said, go ahead. Say, pack up your camel and go. Go ahead. But I tell you this. If you go through those doors, if you go through those doors, I'm coming right behind you. Because where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. You're not going anywhere without me. Why y'all laughing at me? <laughs> now, 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 you need to understand that. I'm going to take a commercial break. <laughs> understand, church, that, that marriages just don't happen. They need to be developed. You just don't have a perfect marriage. It must be developed and by the grace of God. Amen? All right, that's my commercial break. But sometimes, sometimes, if you love someone and that person doesn't want to love you, you reciprocate that love back to you, sometimes... It, that has to let them go. And God was trying to show Israel how much he loved them, but Israel fell in love with another God. But I, I'm telling you how merciful God is. Before he let them go, he extends mercy again. Listen to what he did in chapter 2. Listen to what he said. Hosea was tired of his wife going out and he says, you see, sometimes when, when, when God tries to reach you and you're not listening to him, he will send somebody else to speak to you. <laughs> if you choose not to listen to God, he will use someone else to speak to you. Now listen to what he said in chapter 2, verse 2 and 5. He said, Hosea said to the children, children, go reason with your mother. Tell your mother to take that adulterous look from off her face. Talk to your mother. Tell her to change her Facebook status from single to married. Tell her to delete that young man's number from out of her phone book. Tell her to dress appropriately and stop looking like a hoochie mama. Tell her. Talk to your mother. Because I'm tired of talking to her. He sent the children because he was tired of talking to her church. But sometimes that still will not work. You see, when someone is bent on doing what they want to do, not even God can change their mind. Sometimes that doesn't work. God has to try. And I, I just want you to see how, 
hard God tries to save each and every one of us. I just want to show you how much he loves us. If that doesn't work, he moves to a different angle. Listen to what he says. Now, okay, that didn't work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dry up her resources so that she can't go out. <laughs> you see, sometimes God has to take away that car from you because he knew where you were going with it. Sometimes he has to cut off your cable because he knew what you were watching late in the midnight hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sometimes he has to dry up your resources. He has to sabotage your plans because he knew where you were going, church. And he's doing that because he's trying to save you. Mm. Understand that some misfortunes are blessings. <laughs> some misfortunes are is because God is trying to save you. They're blessings. Hosea tried everything to keep his wife home, but she insisted on going. And love has to let you go. Mm. 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 So Gomer said, Gomer said, I'm going back to my lovers. <laughs> I'm going back to my old lifestyle. Mm. Jesus is boring. I had more fun while I was in the work. Oh, hello, somebody. I'm going back to my lovers. You see, after God tells you about that young man, after he warns you about that flirtatious woman, after God has revealed the end of the end results, sometimes he has to just let you go. Let you go. So Jose Goma said, I'm going back to my lovers. See, it's hard to turn a house of a prostitute into a housewife. She said, I'm going back to my lovers. Hosea is boring. I'm going back to have some fun. So she, she put on her hooker boots. She put on her fishnet stocking. You see, back then it was real fishnet. She put on her, her, her ankle bracelet because she is going to work. <laughs> and she left the presence of Hosea believing that she's going to receive something better. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. She left what she had, church, believing that she's going to receive something better. She believed that the grass was greener on the other side. Ooh. Yeah, most of us, like Goma, we believe the grass is greener on the other side. We believe the grass is, oh, hello, somebody. We believe the grass is greener on the other side. You see, you see, uh, uh, another commercial break. You have to be careful who you marry. Don't get married because the person looks good. There are some good-looking devils out there. Be careful who you marry. Don't marry for looks. It's, listen to me, church. People change over time, you know. What goes up must come down. People change.
See, see when, when, you, when you married him, when you married her, rather, she looked like a Ferrari, full of curves. Ten years and six kids, now she looked like a Buick. When you married him, he looked like a Hummer. <laughs> Ten years and six kids, now he looked like a dump truck carrying a load. <laughs> Be careful how you marry for looks. And what happens now, what happens now, I, I, I'm, being, I'm being for real right now. What happens now is this. Because he has changed, because she has changed, now you want to trade them in for a newer model. You want to trade them in for a newer model. But let me tell you something about these newer models. These newer models are made with fiberglass. They're easily broken. They're expensive to maintain. <laughs> Listen to me. It's best if you hold on to your Buick. Hold on to your dump truck. It never broke down on you. <laughs> See, my wife, she's holding on to this dump truck. <laughs> See, when, when, when I first met my wife, I mean, I, I looked like a, a Hummer. I used to... See, I, I <laughs> why, why, why you got to throw that in there? <laughs> See, I used, to, I, I used to work in the gym. So, so when I met my wife, she likes to swing on my shoulders. But I tell you, things don't stay the same. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get back. So hold on to what God has given you. Amen. Hosea tried to keep her, but she insisted on going her own way, and she left Hosea and went after her lovers. And the Bible said that when she left Hosea Church, you see, something, it, it, it's something about when you experience God, and you leave the presence of God, you become worse. You become worse than when you, before you meet God. The Bible said she went after her lovers, and they used her and abused her until she was worth nothing. Holy Ghost. Even when you're worth nothing, God still wants you. <laughs> Even when your value is zero, God still wants you because your value is not what people place on you, but the price my Jesus paid for you. So God said, God said to Hosea, go, 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 go. Go get your wife. <laughs> She is your wife. She has been your wife, and she's still your wife. Go get your wife. So Hosea went down, and he, 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 don't miss this now. Don't miss this. This is, this is a bit more. Listen to what he did. Remember that when he should have condemned her, he would have used the barley. He should have used the barley to condemn her, but he saved the barley. 
when he went to retrieve her, he brought the barley. <laughs> the barley that should have been used against her, now he's using it to restore her. You see, that's how God was. You see, the cross was supposed to condemn us, but Jesus used the cross to restore us. All right, I'm going to wrap it up right now. I'm finished. Jesus used the cross to restore us when no one else wanted us. He bought her back with the barley and the silver that he had. In other words, church, he gave everything he had in order to buy her back. And that's what God did for us. Because he's in love to the prostitute. He's in love with each and every one of us sitting here today. There's nothing you can do to cause him to fall out of love with you. There's nothing you can do. The Bible said that his love is everlasting. It does not end. That's how much he loves you. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how. There might be a Gomer here today who have wandered away from God. But God's love for you never changed. And right now, he, 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 you thought that you came here on your own, but he brought you here. You thought that you were putting on your clothes, but he was dressing you. You thought you got here on your own, but he brought you here. Because he said, I'm going to go and get my wife. So that they can experience me today. Is there one today? I want to say, Lord, like Goma have been running. I've been hiding. There was a fire in me for the world. But I need you today. I need you right now to quench that fire. I need you to put a fire in my heart for you and not the things of this world. I need you to set me on fire for you, Lord Jesus. I need you to do for me what I can't do for myself. I can't break free without you. I can't be delivered without you. I need you right now, Lord. I need you. I need you. Is there another? Is there another that's one to stand for Jesus? Is there another that want to say, Lord, I want you to have your way? Is there another? <laughs> Praise the Lord. 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 Every head is bowed. Every head is bowed. I want you to pray for them right now. I want you to pray for them right now. Because we have just disturbed the enemy's kingdom. I want you to pray for them right now that God will cover them. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another that want to say, Lord, Lord, I, 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 I want you right now. Like Goma, I have been living in your house, but I have been prostituting myself. And today, oh God, I need you to break those chains from me right now. Take away that lustful spirit from me right now. Take away that adulterous mindset right now. 
and create in me like you did for David. Create in me a clean heart. Renew your spirit in me right now. Lord, I need you now more than ever. Is there another? I want to stand for Jesus. Is there another? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pray, church, pray. Pray, church. Someone needs deliverance right now. Pray. Pray, Ella Clark. Pray, pray, pray. Someone needs deliverance. Someone is wrestling right now with their decision. And they need someone to intervene, intercede for them right now so they can break free. Pray, church. Pray. God wants to deliver someone today. God wants to bring someone home today. Is there another? Is there another that want to stand for Jesus? Is there another that want to set? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there another? That wants to come home. I want to come home. And you want to say today, Jesus, come and get me. Come and get I don't know how to get back home. Come and get me. I have lost my way and I can't find my way home. Come and get me. Is there another? Lord, you see your people. And you know the cries of their heart. So I pray, oh God, that you do for them what they cannot do for themselves. Deliver those who need to be delivered today. Encourage those who need to be encouraged. Strengthen those who need to be strengthened in you. So when the enemy comes to try to deter or distract them, that they can stand for you. Saturate this place with your presence, Lord. Pour out your spirit on each and every heart that is here today. That when we leave this place, we will not go back to life as usual. We will not go back to things the way they are, but be transformed because of your love, to be transformed because of your spirit, to be transformed because of your grace. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We thank you. We love you. And we praise you for you're worthy to be praised. I still can't understand your love. How could you love someone like me? Not even the disciples could understand his love. That they said, what manner of love is this? What kind of love is this? But this is the kind of love that can break your heart. So break our hearts today, Lord. And put us back together. We love you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.